When working with the processors and film, we have to worry about silver. So there's silver within the films and we have to find a way to recover that silver. So there's different ways that we can do it. And the reason why we do it is the worldwide supply of silver. So less silver being mined due to low prices and high refinery cost. And there is actually money that is paid to the department for the recovery of the silver. Um, there's also federal and state laws um, that state we have to do this. So Water Control Act of 1972, the Resource Conservation Hazard Waste Act of 1976, the Clean Water Act of 1984, and Resource Conservation and Recovery Act of 1997 states that we have to recover the silver within the film. So um, the metallic replacement is um, also known as the displacement method. So it's one way that we can recover the silver. It consists of a plastic bucket containing iron cartridges and um, they can be steel wool or iron impregnated foam so this is for low volume departments. Um, the steel, work, steel wool cartridges are the most common type of cartridge. They're subject to the following problems so channeling, rusting, and it causes uh, cloggage of the drain so it's kind of a problem. So the iron impregnated foam cartridge um, consists of a powdery iron impregnated in plastic foam so it minimizes the channeling and the rusting and it provides 50% more surface area uh, so that for of the steel wool for greater efficiency of recovering the silver. So you can see here there's advantages so the operating costs um, are low, there's no electricity going to the unit, um, you can buy the cartridges and they last six months, there's no moving parts and the efficiency is pretty good. So disadvantages, um, clog drains is the big one, rusting um, is a problem. So when we look at the electrolytic method, so it's based on a cathode anode and it uses electrical charge to attract positive silver ions, so the silver collects on the cathode. So it's higher efficiency than the metallic replacement method, um, but you have to have amperage. So your silver um, electrolytic units, so there's two main types that are used. So the thermal el electrolytic system is the most common. There's the circulating electrolytic system designed to recover silver from used fixer and then recirculate it back into the processor. So that's for moderate um, to high volume departments. And the advantages are the silver recovered, uh, recovered is more efficient and there's no channeling, rusting, or drain stoppage, and the silver um, that it's recovered is 92 to 98% pure, which is really good, and the payment can be received on delivery. So usually when they come and clean these, um, the cathode, it's, uh, they hand you a check right then and there, and it's reusable, which is really nice. So there's disadvantages. It does cost more. You have electricity. Um, they can malfunction, so you have to keep an eye on them. So um, there's direct sale of used fixers, so we can contact a company that would come out and we just catch all the fix fixer and then they process it and everything. Um, so the fixer, fixer is collected instead of going down the drain, which you're not allowed to dump it down the drain. Um, no equipment is required, no chemical discharge into drain. It requires a pickup and handling and storage fee, which can get expensive and um, takes up a lot of space. So chemical precipitation is the oldest form of silver recovery. Chemicals are added uh, to use fixer that causes the silver to sink to the bottom of the tank. So this is done at large volume facilities. It is not done at healthcare facilities. There's the ion exchange or resin systems. It's used uh, negative charge resin to attract the positive silver. So it re, uh, regeneration cycle is used to release silver ions from uh, resin. So it's similar to the principle of a water softener. So here's what the silver looks like and 50% of silver is dissolved in fixer and removed by, <laughs> removed by previous methods. So 50% of the silver remains on the film. So film is not diagnostic or no longer needed, can be sold to a silver dealer. So all the films that we have have silver on them. So we cannot just throw those in the trash, we need to go ahead and recycle them. So green film, I don't know if you've even heard of green film, but it is film that hasn't been processed and is the most valuable type um, for recovery. And um, 
that's the, the stuff you have in the dark room that we haven't used yet. And it's 0.4 troy ounces silver per sheet for 14 by 17. And you'll want to recover the silver out of that film. So scrap film, um, that's the film that's in that blue bin in the um, dark room. So, and we use them just to um, get the processor up and running. Um, and it recycles the silver that way. But you'll also want to recycle those films that have silver in the emulsion. And it's about um, a 0.11 troy ounce of silver for 14 by 17. Archival film. Um, so dates prior to 1974 were about 20% more silver um, than current day. So you definitely want to recover those. Just some money in those. So silver recovery systems. So they're feasible from a financial standpoint because you get a check for the money uh, from the silver. And um, we always had a great party with that money. So prevents um, toxic heavy metal pollution into the water system, which is a definite problem. And we must adhere to all the legislative acts. So like I've talked about, it's the Water Control Act of 1972, the Hazardous Waste Act of 1976, the Clean Water Act of 1984, the Conservation and Recovery Act of 1986. They tell us we have to do this. Um, it is a good thing to do. So with those silver specks in the emulsion, that is silver that we need to recycle. So any film that you see, the old style, not the laser films, but the old style film with the emulsion, every one of those films has to be recycled for the silver. All right, so that is your silver recovery. Please read your Carlton um, chapter on this, and it explains all the different systems really well.